Let's talk about life inside the SpaceX Starship. Up until now, our only real-world concept of a spaceship has mostly been a series of crew capsules like the Apollo, the Soyuz, and the Dragon. More like a small pointy box strapped to a rocket engine than an actual ship. These things aren't exactly the highest level of comfort. Even the latest Orion spacecraft is so cramped that a person can't stand up straight inside the command module. The old space shuttle has so far proven to be our high water mark in terms of a legitimate vehicle for interstellar exploration. Still, not exactly spacious, but also not the claustrophobic nightmare of its peers. But now we have the promise of the Starship, a 9 meter diameter towering behemoth of a rocket, Flash Gordon made real. This is the vessel that Elon Musk promises will ferry thousands of people on a six month journey from the Earth to a colony on Mars, which is a fantastical idea in theory, but six months is a very long time to spend in a metal box, hurtling through the vast emptiness of interplanetary space, even if it's a very large metal box. So we have some pretty high expectations about the environment inside that starship, and here's what we think it might look like. Obviously, we've got a pretty wide field of reference for what the inside of a spaceship could be. The Starship Enterprise managed to hook up crew members with their own luxury condos to ride out the multi-year galactic trek, while something more utilitarian like the Millennium Falcon envisioned a janky patchwork of tubes and cabins fit for a space pirate. Ideally, the SpaceX Starship would fall somewhere in the middle. Not exactly the peak of comfort, but room and amenities enough to stave off claustrophobia for a trip to Mars and back. And that brings us to crew size. What is the ideal number of people to bring on a Starship flight? This is important for a couple of reasons. For one, each person is going to require a significant amount of resources, like food and water, to stay alive. So if we know that 100 metric tons is our max load capacity for Starship, then we have to be conscious of the true mass of a single crew member. And for two, we know that the mental health and well-being of the crew is going to be a major factor for these long duration interplanetary missions. If there are too many people on board and not enough personal space, then crew members might start to freak out and panic halfway to Mars. But if there are too few crew members, then people might get sick of each other pretty fast. We might see the first violent crime committed off the Earth. Most experts seem to agree that a crew of 10 is the sweet spot for a Starship mission to Mars. Elon Musk has talked about sending 100 people at once, but all signs point to that being a really bad idea. The full size of the current Starship is 50 meters in length by 9 meters in diameter, and that tapers to a point at the nose. Apparently, Elon insisted that the nose be made more pointy after he watched the Sasha Baron Cohen movie, The Dictator, so that shaves off a bit of interior volume because Elon thought it would be funny. Luckily, there's still plenty of space to work with. Obviously, the lower portion of the Starship is going to be occupied by rocket stuff, you know, at least six Raptor engines that might be upgraded to nine by the first crewed Mars flight, three sea level engines for landing burn, and six vacuum engines to push off from low Earth orbit and set course for the stars. Above that is going to be massive propellant tanks necessary to make that happen, and that section is going to be capped off by something called a common dome. Above that is where the cargo and crew section begins. We're estimating that there will be about 17 meters of length in this top section, and it would make the most sense to divide that into six vertical levels, depending on how the height is distributed across each level. You'd probably want higher ceilings in the cargo bay and lower in the crew section. There would be around two and a half meters from floor to ceiling, give or take, which should be enough to float around comfortably without smacking your head too often. Given that this ship will have to make a vertical landing on Mars, it definitely makes sense to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. So we imagine that the first floor is going to be dedicated to the cargo bay. Once these people get to Mars, they're going to need resources and infrastructure to continue their survival, like rovers and robots and other stuff. So we assume that's all stashed in the lowest level, along with all of the ship's life support systems, power generator, and the ground elevator. Starship is really tall, so in order to get in and out, there needs to be a lift system. 
On level 2 is likely where we would store food and essential supplies, maybe even some kind of a hydroponic garden for growing small amounts of fresh vegetables like leafy greens. On the third level is a good place for the gym and bathroom facilities. Physical fitness is critical for long duration stays in microgravity. Astronauts on the International Space Station have to spend multiple hours per day exercising with a combination of cardio and resistance training. The strap-down treadmill has been a mainstay on the ISS, along with a stationary bicycle. Those are critical for cardiovascular health and maintaining the circulatory system. Weightlifting is equally as important to maintain muscle mass and bone density. Obviously, barbells and free weights don't work in zero gravity, but the ISS has a resistance machine that allows the crew to perform squats and deadlifts with up to 600 pounds of resistance. Unfortunately, there's going to be no shower post-workout. Not only is water a precious resource, it also doesn't flow in zero gravity, so a faucet doesn't work. Astronauts on the ISS wipe themselves down with a wet towel and use a dry shampoo in their hair. And then, of course, there is the space toilet. SpaceX has been working through a few iterations of their zero-g toilet design for the Dragon capsule, so they should have that well figured out by the time we head to Mars. Moving up to level 4 would be the crew quarters. It's not going to be anything fancy, but given the volume of the Starship, everyone should be able to have a reasonably sized compartment. Probably something like those capsule hotels in Japan, though it might be set up in more of a vertical orientation. Level 5 would be a great place for a common area. This is the point where the nose is going to start to really taper in but there would be enough space for people to just kind of float around and chill in an open space, maybe with a really large viewing window that wraps around the room. And then the top floor would be pretty small due to this taper. Also, the current Starship design has the methane header tank located right in the nose, so probably reduced headroom on this level as well. So probably best for the command deck, the place where everyone would strap into a chair for launch and landing, Obviously, the ship would fly mostly autonomously, but there would likely still be some flight controls and things like that. Connecting each level would be a central column. This would be a tube for easy travel between floors in zero gravity, with a ladder for use on Earth and Mars. We'd also guess that the plumbing and wiring would be routed through the center column, and it would also provide a structural element to the core of the ship. This is going to be the biggest struggle for those on board the Starship keeping in touch with the rest of humanity. While astronauts on the ISS are physically isolated in low Earth orbit, they are still connected to the internet, and they can communicate with the Earth in real time. But as the crew of the Starship journey deeper and deeper into interplanetary space, the lag in their communications will grow longer and longer until there is so much delay that you can't even have a two-way conversation with Earth anymore. At the halfway point, it's going to take around 10 minutes for a message to reach either Earth or Mars, and then another 10 minutes for a response to come back. Again, if we're talking about the psychological toll, this is going to be difficult to manage, especially coming from a modern world where we are all instantly connected to everyone all the time. It's going to feel very lonely out there. Now here's the real trick of this whole Starship situation. How do we keep the lights on and the air flowing? It's going to require a large amount of electricity, and there is no easy answer on where that will come from. Solar energy is one of the first things that come to mind. This is how they power the ISS, but keep in mind that those solar arrays are humongous. Eight primary solar wings that are 112 feet long by 39 feet wide. Now, try and imagine our starship with that amount of solar panels attached to the sides. It's far too much to simply fold out and deploy after launching. They might have a solar panel module that's constructed in space and then gets attached to the ship after it refuels in orbit. Consider also that the further away you get from the sun, the less effective those solar panels will be at generating power. So they might need to be even bigger. And then what happens when you get to Mars? You couldn't land with all of that attached, so it's all a bit messy. Idea number two is batteries. Elon Musk happens to also own an electric vehicle company called Tesla. You might have heard of them. Not only does Tesla have an advanced battery pack that they use in their vehicles, they also have a line of dedicated energy storage products called the Powerwall. 
Each power wall holds 13 kilowatt hours of energy and can power an average house for one day. Bringing an inventory of these battery packs along with a smaller, more manageable solar array could provide the energy required to keep the ship functioning for six months at a time. Then the power walls could be slowly recharged on Mars using giant solar arrays on the ground and be ready for a return trip. The downside here being that batteries are extremely heavy. Each unit is about 250 pounds, so that would add up quickly and take away from the amount of usable cargo capacity in the ship, which would make colonizing Mars a little more difficult. Hydrogen fuel cells are a strong candidate. They convert hydrogen gas into electricity and produce water as a byproduct, so almost like killing two birds with one stone, and hydrogen is the lightest element in the known universe, so that's an added bonus. We've already figured out how to power a car with a hydrogen fuel cell, so it's certainly possible that it can be scaled up to a starship. Now, obviously we can go on speculating here, but we'll leave it there and end by asking the question, what do you think life in a starship will be like? Drop your theories down below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.